<laughs> yeah, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you can take that one too. It does have quite a bit of figs on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you got to sacrifice a lot of figs. <laughs> That's okay because there's so many others, and you know the energy, the energy from all of the prunings that would have gone into all of the branches that <laughs> look at them all, all of the branches that we pruned. That energy is going to be transferred back into the remaining fruit on the tree. It's going to be redirected. And so that's fine. You just get bigger fruit. This tree is so vigorous that it's, it's scarcely going to matter, trust me, because these figs... Yeah. Oh gosh, it's it's just loaded with with fruit, and the reason why I'm oh yeah, oh yeah, we we yeah we have to, and I'm going to explain why in a minute. And you can see all those figs down there. Ah, oh, you sacrifice a few figs. Who cares? It's for the fig the fig trees better general health in the future. Okay, so and for a better crop. And you've got to open up the tree. You can see this tree in, in a video recently that I took. And I want you to look at these videos because there's a progression of videos which show you, going back to last year when I cut this tree severely and lobbed off these branches, big branches, all, all of them, the whole tree, four foot tall, because it was just getting unmanageable. And you can go back to how I prune my in-ground fig trees. And you will see me lobbing off, and Deborah lobbing off these branches, because, as I mentioned in the video, every third year at the end of the third growing season, I chop this tree back dramatically, because like this, because I have to, or it will just outgrow the house, and I can't get the figs, the birds get to the figs, I can't get a net over the tree, I, I gotta go up on a ladder. And so I try to manage my fig trees as carefully as I can and use as much strategy as I possibly can muster up to do that. And it takes work. I mean, <laughs> look at all this. This is the second time I've cleaned this up. And I've still got more branches to pull out of here, like this branch here. I, I, I'm going to take that branch out so I can get some more air in there. Debbie's going to yell at me. She says, there's so many things on that. Here, clip that one off, Deb. Uh -huh. <laughs> she, doesn't want, she doesn't want to do it. All right, I'll get it later. <laughs> but, uh, this is an age-old discussion that takes place every time I get to seriously pruning back the tree. Never, ever never hesitate to severely prune your fig trees, especially your in-ground fig trees, when it becomes necessary. Only when it becomes necessary, but it more often becomes necessary than not. And many, many people fail to muster the courage, you know, to, to start chopping away at bread. It's not an easy feat. I don't like it either. But you've got to do it. You have to face the reality. You need to open up the tree to sunshine and the air's got to flow through from the bottom. I had to chop all this out. If you look at that last video, the one I just referred to, you will see this tree when it's got all of its branches on it and I haven't done any pruning yet to thin them out. And then take a look at that and take a look at now. And I'm not finished. I'm in the process. Now, remember to look back at that other video. I want you to, because I've done a series of videos on this tree, and I'm going to show you something today that's important. I'm going to show you why I pinched this tree in the last video of this tree. Okay? And it wasn't to formulate figs, because you will note in that video that the tree already had plenty of figs one in every node and sometimes two as is the case with this tree there are many doubles on this tree it's a very very vigorous 
variety and very delicious. Trust me, exquisite. And the reason why I did it was because it was a follow-up of, remember, when I severely pruned this tree that you can see in the video last year. Why I prune my in-ground fig trees. I believe that was the title, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> and you'll see it. And while well, we were lobbing off all the branches. And then look at the growth that came in the spring. I mean, it, it didn't. It didn't slow it down at all. It, these would get six, seven, eight foot tall by the end of the summer. It's only July 10th now. And so by the end of the summer, by the end of September, even October, those, those branches, if I had pinched them, they would have just continued to grow higher and higher and higher. And that wouldn't have been the end of the world, but I would have had difficulty getting that over it. And I would have had a lot of figs that wouldn't ripen in the season. Now, why is that? Well, let's go over that. You need to know this, okay? Because if you take a fig branch like this, the ones on the bottom are going to get ripe first. And they take about 90 days. Let's just use 90 days for an average. Every variety is a little different, okay? So that, from when you first saw it as a tiny little fig, was going to take about 90 days. So it was going to get ripe in plenty of time during the season. And it was going to get ripe in August, okay? But as you go up the branch, see the figs are smaller, of course, because they emerge later and the tiny ones, the smaller ones, aren't going to get ripe until September. And I didn't want many, some yes. You, you will see some, like, like, let's take this branch here. I didn't want many, look at those little figs. I didn't want many to get ripe in October. I didn't want that. Some yes, but it's too cold. The nights are cold the remnants of hurricanes and storms and winter and, and weather systems wreak havoc on your fig tree. A lot of downpours, heavy downpours, torrential rains, and the cold nights and the short days by then as you have a waning sun, a waning solstice, you, that's not a recipe for good, exquisite tasting figs. It's just not. But to go outside and pick a fig, a ripe fig, and when you don't have anything else, that's okay. So I'll take a few of those, but I want most of my figs to ripen in July and August, okay? That's end September, early September, if possible. How do you do that? Well, you pinch. <laughs> that's why I pinched, so that all of that energy that would have ordinarily gone into a five or six foot branch with little tiny figs emerging later in the season, which would never ever come to fruition. All of that energy will be redirected back down to the figs that are there that you know in 90 days will have plenty of time to ripen during the traditional summer season. So that's the reason why. And you can see the results. Now let's look at some more results of that. Because if you watch that video, that last one that I posted for you you wouldn't see this you see that I've cut this away so you see you wouldn't have seen this you wouldn't see that you see up there you see that branch emerging where I right where I clipped it where I pinched it you wouldn't see th this these different branches coming off of the main step you wouldn't see that but now you're seeing it everywhere. Look at this. If it wasn't for to develop new figs, okay, that wasn't the purpose of it. It was to redirect the energy into the figs that are here that have time to ripen during the season and also to start scaffolding or to start producing new branches that you're going to skillfully take care of for next season to be your next season's producers. And these are thick branches. These, these are strong branches, very vigorous. They're going to produce an abundance of fruit this year 
yes, this year, and they're going to produce an abundance of fruit next year. And I've already, okay, made sure, I made sure that these branches are sprouting out, okay, in places where I'll be able to next year pick the ones that I want to grow that don't shade out other important branches, fruit bearing branches, and that maybe shape the tree more nicely and more uh, symmetrically. And I'll take the inside ones and I'll pluck them off because you never want branches to grow inside the center of the tree because then you discourage uh, proper circulation of the air in the tree and sun. So you're going to pick, you're going to pick which ones of these branches next spring that you want to keep and which ones you want to prune out. But you see how they formed. Look how beautiful. Look how beautiful they formed since I pinched. If you go back and look just a few weeks ago when I pinched, okay, you will see that they were not there. None of them were there and they're there now. Look at them and look how they grow. And they're everywhere. Look at this. You can see that. Okay. So now you know why. And you want to do this to a healthy tree, a vigorous tree, never to a weak tree that's, that's trying to gain a stride in life. Sometimes give a tree a break. Sometimes it's better to pluck and not pinch. What does that mean? <laughs> it means sometimes it's far better, especially in a container or even when you have a, a weak tree or a young tree, in ground it's better to pluck off the figs just pluck them off don't worry about it we're all anxious to get fruit but sometimes you have to make sacrifices hey it's not easy as i've said often in my videos growing figs is not always easy sometimes we have to make hard choices sometimes we have to sacrifice it's all a sacrifice when it comes to work and expense look at the work it's a lot of work and if I try to tell you how many hours, look how long this tree has been here. Look at all of those branches. This tree has been here over 25. It's about 28 years. And if I told you all the work, if I tried to, if there was once some way to condense it all into a video and show you the amount of work that I've done on this tree in 28 years, I'd be it's so, I, it just, it, I don't know that it could possibly ever be done, if it could be done, because it would take so long. Nobody could watch it. You'd be an old person before you were finished. That much work. But it's okay. We do it gradually over the years and we do it with an intention to create better results. And they don't come for free. They're not easy. There's an expense. There's a toll to be paid. And you're watching it. <laughs> As I clip these branches and you know, I prune them and I pinch them and Sometimes you have to pluck them. Like I told you, you have to make the sacrifices. Make the sacrifices. Don't worry about it. Because you want the roots to grow too. You don't, you don't want to just always pay attention to what's going on above the ground. You want to think like what is going on below the ground. You know, are the roots forming properly? And are they developing sufficiently to support the entire tree in its entirety over time? so that you can have results like this. Now I'm gonna film this again when these figs begin to ripen. <laughs> and I, I have other videos where you can already see that. If you wanna look back historically in my videos, there's quite a few videos I have now, over a hundred videos, and thank you for watching the videos. You know, when I started doing this, it was just simply to convey information. I felt the need to do it and to store my videos and store my memories. But thank you very much for subscribing. I never imagined that I would almost have 4,000 subscribers. I never even contemplated it, not one time. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to make the videos, and there's quite a few there. And you can find a little bit of anything you're looking for in my videos, and please feel welcome to look through them and look for that information you're looking for. There's a lot of information coming. It's, there's so much more I want to talk about. And just like today, I never showed this before on a video. Never. The way these little shoots will develop. And I'm actually not just talking about it. I'm demonstrating it for you and telling you that you can go back and look at the video just a few weeks ago before they were even here. When I discussed why was I doing it. I wasn't doing it to formulate new figs in every node. They were already there. 
but I was doing it to encourage a better crop, more energy being redirected into the figs, bigger figs, better quality figs, earlier figs, and to encourage proper scaffolding for the future so I could prune out these extra little branches that are now emerging so that next year I'll have a beautiful tree and it won't be real big and I'll still be able to get a net, a net over it and I'll still be able to uh, keep it under control and that's so important to keep a tree under control especially when you have a vigorous grower and that's what it's all about that's what we're really striving for that's our goal. Our goal is to have a tree that's a tree that will produce fruit, lots of fruit. That's it. That's my goal always on all my varieties and all my trees. And you can look at my, even my, my container fig trees. They're full of fruit. And you can look at the harvest. Go back and look. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the fig pudding. I like that. And maybe I'll make a video. <laughs> the, the proof is in the fig pudding. But go back and look at them. For your own benefit especially the newbies because by example that's how we learn you know i was a teacher that's my profession uh, long ago many years ago when i graduated from a teacher college and i had students over the years many students and sometimes i was invited to their later i was a grammar school teacher uh, sometimes i was invited to their their graduation and i had people talk to me you know I one time I, I'd give you an example I'd give you a thousand examples a thousand but one time a, a young girl came up to me at her high school uh, graduation and she said to me my name and she said I have to tell you something you will never ever never ever never understand how much of an influence you have been in my life and that made me feel really good because that's why I was a teacher that was the reason I was a teacher okay and I'm still a teacher I'm I'm here to teach you if you're willing to learn those of you that need the information I'm here to teach you and that's my goal that's my mission okay and I want that result to occur too I may never hear it from you, and thank you for your comments, because I do hear it, but I may not hear all of you, but I know out there that there's going to be people that are saying in the future, wow, that guy influenced me, and he influenced me positively, and I learned a great deal from him. If I can accomplish that, that I'm so happy. That's it. Because I'm still a teacher in heart. So rather than ramble on and on and on about that, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to cut it short. You can do this too. You can do it better than me. We, you really can because you have much more time to do it, especially you young fixed fixers out there. Uh, take this knowledge, you know, and build upon it. You know, I, I can, re I, I could go into so many things right now. I think I'll just cut it off. Uh, Newton had a, a wonderful comment about how he had accomplished so much when he wrote the Principia, which is just a magnificent book about physics, understanding how the, this earth works and the physics that govern this earth. And what he said about standing on the shoulders of giants, I don't profess to be a giant, but he gave all the credit to the giants that he had stood on the shoulders of to accomplish the things that he accomplished. And what did he mean by that? He meant that incrementally we learn from other people that's what our civilization does that's what our species does our species learns from our species the people that come before us that's the whole purpose of me transferring this information over to you because I want you to be a good figster I want you to learn how to grow figs figs real figs 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 that's what it's all about okay so that's what all of my videos are about and thank you for watching them and thank you for supporting my videos and me and thank you for subscribing and I'm going to continue to transfer as much of that information as I have as is possible for me to do before I can't do it anymore. One last thing, you might have noticed some white powder here, just in case you have. Uh, I put some lime down. Now this tree has a lot of calcium because you will note on the ground there's a lot of crushed shells everywhere. 
but still every few years I throw a few handfuls of pulverized lime or granulated lime which really I prefer but I couldn't get any this time but any kind of lime as long as this garden lime will do and you want to keep your figs well limed for what it's worth that's my opinion I've been doing it for many 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 decades and, and you can see the results I, I believe in it uh, wholeheartedly so I just thought that I'd point that out in case you saw that so with that thank you for watching certainly do appreciate your visit visit have a wonderful day it's not quite even the middle of July we just got past the July 4th weekend I'm looking forward to a wonderful harvest I posted recently a, a video about Desert King and uh, it was a large harvest and then I brought them inside the house uh, and uh, made uh, preserves and that's on video my last video you might want to look it up if you haven't seen it uh, and I talk about Breba these are all main crop figs all main crop figs there's not many almost no um, first year figs on this and the reason why is because I cut all the branches off which you're seeing in my video that I referred to earlier so you're not going to get any first crop figs uh, on last year's wood when there's no last year's wood I chopped it all away but these are all main crop figs and they'll be getting ripe uh, in August and I'll make another video hey thank you thank you for visiting you have a wonderful day